Welcome to Blexley Hall, a fashionable medieval farmhouse in Yardley, Birmingham. In this guided tour, you will explore this house and learn more about the domestic life in England in the 17th century. Hello everyone, so today we are in Yardley, Birmingham to explore Blexley Hall, a medieval house built for Richard Smallbrook in 1590. The Smallbrook family had lived in Yardley since 1275 and were powerful landowners in Birmingham. We have almost reached the reception, so I need to make sure that uh, my name is on the list before I get to see the, the hall. Hello. It is said that an earlier house, which dated back to the 13th century, was on the site and was demolished to build the current Blexley Hall. When Richard Smallbrook II died in 1613, his granddaughter Barbara inherited Blexley Hall and she lived there with her second husband, Elmer Folliot, and they had 12 children together. And when she died in 1679, her eldest son, Elmer Jr., inherited the house. And when he died in 1684, the house was passed down to his brother, Robert Folliot. And one year later, Robert Folliot sold the house to the Reverend Dr. Henry Greswold, rector of Solihull. The Greswold family tenanted the house to farmers and in the 1880s, Blexley Hall was in a state of neglect, so the Greswold decided to sell the house and the house was bought by Henry Doan, who restored the house to its former beauty and one year later he sold it to Thomas Mary, a Birmingham paint and varnish manufacturer. And when he died in 1932, the house was sold this time to Birmingham Corporation. Hello. My what? My name? Uh, Blexley Hall opened as a museum in 1935 and this is the hall. The hall is laid out like a medieval hall with service rooms at one end and private rooms at the other end. Oh yeah, okay. The table dates from 1620 and it is likely to be the one listed in the 1684 inventory. It remained here until 1932 when the house contents were auctioned and it was returned in 1976. The walls, including the timbers, have been lime washed, a normal treatment in Tudor times when lime washes were applied periodically to make rooms clean and fresh. The ceiling is unusually high for the period, which shows that Blexley Hall was very fashionable and modern for the time. This is a great parlour. It was used for private dining, seating and entertaining. It has a door to the garden so people could come and go without passing through the main hall. The original fireplace contains a fire basket designed to burn coal. The cage magpie is a reference to the early popularity of cage birds from 1550 thousands of canaries 
were imported annually and kept for their song. By 1684, magpies, jackdaws and parrots, which could all be taught to talk, were also popular. The painted wall hangings depict the Old Testament story of Joseph and his brothers. They are based on a set of 17th century painted hangings at Old Penn Manor in Gloucestershire. Tudor and Jacobean people had a passion for decorating their houses and a lot of the furniture of the period is richly decorated with carving. This is the little parlour and it was used by the women of the house as a little withdrawing room in which to sit and chat and the word parlour comes from the French uh, parler which means to talk. This little room used to have a fireplace but its location remains a mystery. This is not the original fireplace, but it incorporates a reproduction 17th century metal fire bag. They were used to protect the bricks at the back of the fire and reflect heat back into the room. The lower part of the staircase comes from Christ Church, the church demolished in 1899, which stood at the top of New Street facing the town hall. This is the painted chamber. The wall paintings in this room date from when the house was built. They were plastered over, probably in the late 17th century, when they would have been seen as old-fashioned and remained hidden until the 1950s. In 1941, a bomb exploded in Blexley Hall, causing extensive damage and repairs to the fragmented plaster in the painted chamber led to the discovery of the 16th century wall paintings. In this room, we learn more about Blexley Hall, how it was built and what materials were used for its construction. Yardley has a lot of clay so it was ideal for the development of bricks and tiles industries in the 15th century. The hall is built on a series of brick arches, each two meters high. Richard Smallbrook could not afford to use brick throughout his house, but he did use a lot of glass, which was very expensive at the time. These cat and bird were found walled up inside Hay Hall, a 15th century house in Tysley. The purpose was to ward off evil spirits. The windows date from the 19th century. The original windows were freeze windows, much narrower and higher up. These 
are the different materials used to build Blexley Hall. The top left is a brick, underneath it is a tile. On top right hand side is a shard of 16th century window glass and underneath it is a hand forged iron nail. Black Sea Hall was not designed by an architect but by a master craftsman in consultation with his client so it reflects the personal taste of Richard Smallbrook and the house was intended to impress. Anyone approaching the house would have known from the material used in its construction that it was the home of a wealthy and important man. Richard Smallbrook was wealthy enough to use timber purely for decoration. He also used glazed windows, fireplaces with chimneys, and the second story accessed by a stair. This is the gallery which is unusual for the size of the house. Normally the first floor rooms would have opened into each other. Galleries became fashionable to meet the growing desire for privacy. This is Richard Smallbrook's office, referred to in his will as my closet at Yardley. The letterboard on the wall is based on illustrations in 17th century Dutch paintings and the carved writing box on the desk is 17th century. This room is displayed as a servant's chamber, but it is unlikely that it was used by servants originally. The servants who lived in probably used one of the attic rooms, which has an original fireplace. Most of the servants in Blexley Hall used to come in daily and went back home at night. Elizabeth Smith was the maid servant of Elmer Folia Jr. who lived alone at Blexley Hall after his mother's death. He left her £10 in his will. This is the far chamber. It has painted wall hangings based on the designs and colors of the 16th century wall paintings in the painted chamber. The little box with holes in it on the floor is a replica 17th century foot warmer. Painted canvas wall hangings were used for decoration as an alternative to wall paintings, but also to help keep draughts at bay. This is a truckle bed. They were used by the children or the servants of the house, or when an extra bed was required. The furniture in the room are accurate replicas of late 16th and 17th century pieces. Cold winter months were very tough and several methods were used to fight it, including warming pans full of hot coals to warm beds and portable braziers which would hold a small fire. The chamber pot on the chair is 17th century and chamber pots became very fashionable because they could be emptied outside and so smelly indoor toilet chute became obsolete. A gallery provided somewhere to show off paintings and furniture, but at first 
It was constructed mainly in grander houses. In this room, we learn about the day-to-day -day life of 17th century people. Medieval people became less suspicious of raw vegetables and fruits, even though meat still represented three quarters of the diet. The small brooks were almost self-sufficient. They were producing meat, grain, dairy produce, vegetables and fruits. However, they had to purchase salt and luxury goods such as sugar and wine. Livestock was killed in the autumn and the meat preserved by salting. England's first coffee shop opened in 1650. Tea was on sale in London by 1658. Chocolate became a popular drink among those who could afford it. Beer was the most common drink as water was frequently dirty. Herbs were added to brews for the beneficial health properties. 17th century clothing was largely made of wool and linen. A wide range of colors were available. Black conveyed an air of authority. Blue was usually worn by children and servants. And country people favored shades of verset. While styles were largely governed by wealth and practicality, it was often claimed that the English wore their purses on their backs. In other words, image was important. During the Civil War that lasted from 1642 to 1649 and was the result of a conflict between King Charles I and the Parliament, the Puritan influence led to a muting of color in favor of more darker tones. Leisure time was very important in the 17th century. Clay pipes have been found in the garderobe, indicating that smoking was one of the small brook's pastimes. Tobacco was introduced in Elizabethan times and it soared in popularity. A pamphlet dating from 1656 and entitled a true relation of strange and wonderful sights fell from the plastered ceiling of the room above the little parlor in 1953. Embroidery and fishing were also very popular. The small brooks would fish in the nearby river call. A fishing line weight was found on the premises. This is the garderobe. 
the earliest form of indoor toilets. Toilet chutes sometimes were used as rubbish chutes and their contents now provide useful information about domestic life in the medieval era. This brick-built kitchen was added in 1650. Before then, cooking may have been done in a separate building. To save money and time, items were often cooked together in a cauldron hanging over the fire. On the shelves are 17th century earthenware and wooden items and leather corsuels in which workers took ale and cider to the fields. A lot of time was spent preserving food and it was very difficult to feed animals over the winter so many were slaughtered and the meat preserved by salting, drying or smoking. Other foodstuffs were pickled, potted or smoked to preserve them. Black Sea Hall was almost self-sufficient in food but wine, sugar, salt and spices had to be bought in. The spice trade was opening up during the 17th century and ships sailed to the spice islands of Indonesia to bring back precious cargoes of nutmeg, cinnamon and cloves for culinary and medicinal use. The journey could take a ship three years and up to two-thirds of the crew could die, but the value of the trade was said to be worth £600,000 a year in 1613. At the east end of Blakesley Hall, separated from it by the cross passage, are three service rooms. We are now entering the battery where barrels were kept. The largest of the nine standard barrel sizes is called a butt. The replica cider press is based on the 17th century woodcut. According to the 1684 inventory, the battery contained, among other things, five barrels glasses, glass bottles, cups, mugs, jugs and other odd things. This is a steel room where the mistress of the house would make medicines, perfumes and household preparations using herbs, spices and other ingredients, disguising bitter taste by grating in sugar from a tall conical sugar loaf. On the floor at the back is a tiny steel oven. A distilling vessel containing water and ingredients would be placed on the top as it boiled, the steam condensed inside the top of the vessel. This condensate containing the distilled essence of the ingredients would drip out through the spout and be carefully bottled, ready for use. This is the bolting room where flour was stored and bread dough prepared. 
The term bolting refers to the sieving of coarse meal to separate flour from bran. The bread was probably baked in a clay beehive oven outside. The cupboard opposite is a ventilated food cupboard.